I love our our weekly podcast. It's, it brings a little bit of light into the trading, especially when it's red, uh, yes. and it just it's a nice to put things in perspective again and hear everyone's um, yeah, point on the trades. It, it it is it is. I mean, ultimately, trading it's easy. It genuinely is. You know, the hard part is you. It's it's up here. And once you've cracked your mindset, you'll crack the trading. But so many people can't do it. Um, yeah. The nature of what we do. I couldn't agree any more with that. I actually had a tweet not so long ago that literally said something similar where, you know, you have beginner's luck because in the end, you it's not too complicated what you're doing right like you could teach trading to a five-year-old right you have a you have a trend you ride that trend when it breaks you get out <laughs> but then you know so we have that beginner's luck because we just do the easy stuff we have that confidence and then we overcomplicate for the next you know one two three years and then eventually we boil it back down to the basics indeed i i, I couldn't agree more um, <laughs> i live my life on daily charts <laughs> and indicators all of this what they all talk about the help but they're not the definitive um it's just basic stuff it's price and bounce points that's it you know and just having a conviction in what you're doing but you try and explain that to a newbie no it's got to be a minute chart rsi's got to do this bollinger band's got to do all oh, the macd's going like here wire oh there's a new indicator out Oh, I'll have a look at the ADX as well. And before you know it, it's like, <laughs> what the hell, what the hell? It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now. I won't stop till I wear the crown. So what's your discipline, son? Are you day trader? Are you scalper? Are you trend follower position? Yeah, I, I can't wait to kind of get into that, especially about you. But uh, I, I personally, I'm more of a front side mom momentum long bias trader on small caps. And okay. I really specialize in pre-market uh, trading. So that's that's kind of what my niche is. Well, I'm glad you say that because when it comes to stocks and things like that, I am shocking. I I'm absolutely terrible at it. <laughs> but in indices gold forex no problem i can read a chart see what it's doing but stocks to me i, I just find them because the con the, the news driven i i'm not i'm a technical trader as opposed to a news driven trader and because i deal intraday fundamentals means sod all not really right you know, that, that it's about 20 percent of the trade the rest of it is technical whereas i find stocks is the other way around You've got to understand what's happening inside the particular stock. Otherwise, no, you, you, you sort of, it's like trying to spling mud onto a wall and hope that God it sticks. Yeah. Um, that's that's I, my I, kind of theory with stocks. Yeah, it's, I definitely would agree to, with that to some extent. The only thing is, I think the bigger the company, the more that's the case with a lot of the companies that we trade. There was a while I stopped looking at the news because it created a fake, like a bias in my head about the stock. And it was totally irrelevant, I learned, because like you, I became a pure price action trader. So it helps if there's news, a reason people are trading it. But ultimately, you know, you don't want to build a bias about the news. Oh, it's not a good company. But hey, you know what? The chart's going up like crazy. So you got to trade it. Right. So. <laughs> Look at GameStop. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That, that, that was a thing. Nobody had even bloody heard of it till it got hold of the media and then wallop. Um, I, yeah, absolutely so, crazy. The herd mentality. You can't. Uh... Oh, I'll never be with a herd. <laughs> <laughs> be, yeah. be, be a lone wolf. <laughs> Amen. So, wait, uh, Colby, do you want to introduce sure. Gruffy Trader or, or however you would like to be called? And you know give it's it, rough, give it Gary, anything rough, fat boy, Gary. doesn't bother me in the slightest i'm old and thick skinned <laughs> so don't worry and and we've got a silent person in the bottom is it toby toby yeah it's me hello kid you, you didn't want to leave you out there oh it's okay i got on a little bit late <laughs> <laughs> yeah so for those of you who don't know this is gary aka the scruffy trader on youtube um, he's been trading for over 15 years, and he's primarily a Forex trader, and he's also a funded 
prop trader through the five percenters, which is a really, really difficult thing to do. Um, how'd you get the name Scruffy? Oh, well, most people think it's just because my charts will be chaotic. It's <laughs> not. Looking at me, I'm not exactly polished, am I? I am what's called a natural born scruff. I can make a mess in an empty room. I genuinely can. And my wife sort of coined the phrase because it's always been scruff. You know, oi, scruffy, come here. And it just developed into scruffy trader. Mm hmm um because that's what i do for a living um then it just seemed to fit um happy days happy days i was watching one of your videos and you were saying how you're scruffy you'll mess things up but you're very technical with trading and Indeed. methodical uh, about um, it i am in yeah when, when it comes to if anybody ever watches my videos the first thing that'll go at the mind is where did this lunatic come from because <laughs> i've got a vicious sense of humor and I genuinely do. But if you watch it, I'm almost like a light switch. And when I was in industry, that's exactly what they called me. Because my wife sits here and she runs her business from there. And, and we just bicker on all day. Because when I make a video, I just literally switch the camera on. And what you see is what you get. It's me at my job. Yep. But when I turn to go into the chart, like a light switch, I'm on point. I know exactly what I'm looking at. And I'm very methodical in what I do, I follow the same process over and over. And then the next day I come back, I do the same process, rinse and repeat. I don't look for holy grails. I just follow the process and it either works or it doesn't. But over the years, because you get in tune with the market and you can almost call it um, a sixth sense, if you like, you just kind of look at the chart and because you've seen it a thousand times before, you have a good feeling for it. And then you start working and that's just repetition. You just have a, a muscle memory for it. So my trading is incredibly simple, you know, and I personally think this, the more simple, the better. But it, it, it looks chaotic, um, especially because you only ever see it down on a low time frame. But the ideas are all high time frame. I trade high time frame concepts with low time frame entries and then back to high time frame exits. So I'm working down and then back up again. But it's very hard to portray that in a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give just a quick little like five minute explanation of how you break down the market like you were telling me yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I work to a power of three. And the power of three is very simple. It's I look for what I call a deep trend. So I'll look for three charts, monthly, weekly, daily. And I look for a correlation between those three to see if there's any form of trend moving. Now, if there is, that's not my direction for the day. What that does is that reinforces whether or not I'm going to have a big target or a small target. Because if I come down and I'm going to go with that bigger trend, well, I've got the wind in my sails. That, that's the way I look at it. Then I break it into the second part, which I call the mid-trend. It's what's happening today. And I'll look from the pivot. And the pivot between the two of them is the daily. So I'll go from the daily to the four to the hour. And I look to see if they're in correlation. Well, if that mid-trend matches the deep trend, I'm on for a good winner here. This could be a real good trade. If they are in conflict, then that's not that I'm not going to take the trade, but I'll be very conservative with the trade. And then from there, the pivot point is the hour. And I'll go hour 15, five to find what's happening right now, this exact moment. And if those three are correlating to the mid, it's time to go. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And, and, you, and I break it down like that. And I check the charts at the top of each hour. I avoid the opens like the plague. Uh, I find the opens to be, let, let's just say pragmatic, because it, you don't really know whether you're going to be faked out or whether it's just going to run. So I like to see what the aftermath is. So I start my day about nine o'clock, uh, my time, UK time. So it's after the London Open. Check it if it's ready. And I've gone through my process. 
then for that next hour, I'm looking to get into the market and I'll trade it for the hour. And then if it's not ready, well, that's where your good old cup of coffee comes into play. Mm. You just have a cup of coffee, you sit back, wait for the next hour. What's happening? Are we ready to go? No. Okay. I'll have another cup of coffee or I'll do a bit more work. And then eventually the line up and waiting is probably my best tool. And then when it's time to go, you're pretty much ready to, to rock and roll. But I think new new traders, they, they, they do it the other way. They start with maybe a minute chart, a five minute chart. And they think, right, this is ready to rock. They jump in, then they plan the trade. Well, I do it in reverse. I plan the trade first. And the entry is just the last bit. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the watered way. Does that make sense? Yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, I think uh, that like essentially trading is all about trying to find where the bigger money is. And you're is. basically trying to say, well, here's where the majority of money is through the last year. Here's where it's been in the last month. And whenever those things line up, then you basically have you're basically finding a way to find to get a really high probability trade. Correct, uh, and and it comes down to the levels as well because what I'm also trying to do is I'm looking to trade pockets of air. I don't want any resistance points in it, whether it's an outer Bollinger Band, a moving average, or a support and, and resistance level. But I only use key support and resistance. The only levels I have on my chart a monthly weekly daily that's it mm -hmm. and if you look at them when they're bunched up together on sort of a daily chart they look horrendous they look horrific but when you put them down into a five minute chart it flares out and you've got decent ranges and then all you're doing is working from one zone to the next and you're looking to have the wind in your sails and that's why you do it with the power of three go down through the points and then just basic stuff. The price will tell you what it wants to know. You know, you see a strong directional drive and you can get two fixed points on it, a definitive high, definitive low, and you put a fib in there. Well, that fib, if it's marrying up to levels that you've put in, it reinforces it. Now, if you come further down the chart into an hourly and you can see an hourly drive, well, that gives you entries and exits as well because... The chart will show its hand between zero and 23. You can see the direction change or you can see it moving in your favor. 23 gives you an entry, 38 gives you risk free, 50 gives you a take profit, and then 61, 76.4 and so forth can give you the runner. Um, so a fib is a perfect tool and I use that every single day. You know, you don't need too many indicators. You know, the price will tell you what it wants to know. Yeah, I think that's a really good point how you're you're kind of finding the price action fundamental direction first. And Correct. then on top of that, if you have an indicator that is aiding in the thesis originally, then that's whenever you actually can use that indicator to know if it's going to be a good trade or not. Correct. Rather so, than the so other way around. In a watered way, pretty much. Um, mm. Levels are my map. It's the road map to the stars, shall we say. But the price is king. The price will tell you exactly what it wants to know. You don't need volume indicators if you can understand how the price works. You know, if it's a small, tiny, wee candle, well, you don't need to look at the volume because you can see there isn't any there. Mm -hmm. If it's massive, you could have seen the, the massive spike or you can start seeing the candles build up. You can see the volume building up into it. You know, so sometimes indicators, they have that place. They definitely have that place, but I don't think they're the be all and end all of everything. Mm -hmm. you know? And then ultimately it comes down to, well, as I was saying, if you've got the wind in your sails, you can have a better target. Say, say a standard ATR for an hour is 20 pips and you want to be conservative. So you get about 15, 10, something like that. However, if the wind's in your sails, you might think, well, this might run for two hours. So I can go for 30 pips. So it's common sense as well. You target appropriately, but more importantly, you size appropriately. Because one thing I'm very good at is I never go 100% to market, ever. 
I'll dip my toe in the water first and then I'll build a position up. And essentially what happens with that is you naturally reduce your exposure, but you also increase your upside at the same time just by knowing where your pain threshold is. So if I enter here and my pain is down here, I assume I'm going to enter 100% of market. This might sound a bit odd. And I know how much that costs. Okay. But I come from a business background, as you know. I don't want to pay full price for anything. You know, it's the nature of what I do. So I'll enter 20% of the position first and I'll build it backwards. And because I was already comfortable with the cost of the trade at full price, well, that reduced exposure means I'm even more comfortable because if I'm wrong, it costs me less than what I've already agreed to pay. And that's how I think. I think in money. I don't think in pips. I don't think in percentages or anything like that. I work in physical money. I will put 500 pounds on the table and I expect that 500 pounds to make me X amount of money. And if I'm wrong, well, I didn't want to waste 500 pounds. So I'll reduce the exposure on that by breaking the position. So you're, so you're averaging out or you're averaging down? I, I average backwards. I never average. Well, I'll, I'll rephrase that. When I'm day trading, I don't build into a position as it moves for me. Because what happens and what I've found over the last sort of many years that I've done this, you often put a position in and it's at the top of the market where it decides to turn around and go the other way so then you're like oh no this ain't right because it's the difference between trend base following and working the waves of the market but if i'm swing trading which i do swing trade pay for my car etc it's all on daily charts i will be looking to build a position over a period of time but when i'm day trading i know where my entry is I know where my pain is, where enough's enough. And I build the position backwards into that. And what happens is the, the first three are the trade, because I expect the market to move against me. Those three going to full target is more than going 100% to target at point of entry. And then four and five, because I break it into five positions, they get me out of trouble if I'm wrong. But if I am wrong, well, five costs next to nothing because it's right next to where I would be getting out anyway. Okay. And it's, I think it's, I got it now. So you're basically accumulating your full position, your full ideal position size as the price goes against you. Yeah. And then I if mean, it yeah, reaches your spot. How, how, how many times do you absolutely nail a position on the head? You go, right, the market's ready. I press the button. Off we go. How many times does it never look back, go straight to target? Only my stops do that. They perfectly do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, that's the exact right answer. Because <laughs> for me, even though I'm pretty good at this, we never time the market correct. You know, we, we know a rough idea of where we need to be. But the exact timing, well, you've got your spreads, you've got different bits and pieces that goes on. I always saw it move back, whether it's five pips, 10 pips, even 15 pips against me, where before it turned around and starts rocketing off. And I wanted to capitalize on that because on a percentage point of view, well, it goes backwards more than it goes for me off the belt. So it was common sense to build it backwards. And if it just runs for me, just you press the button and it's triggered the first thing, off it goes, well, Fine. That's the process. But over time, the extra ones work. And that's how I do it. And it it just it keeps me sane as well. Um, because I'm I'm always comfortable with my positions, but it also gives me room to work. Because the other side of it is if you go 100 percent to market, you've then got to manipulate that position. Oh, do I take 10 percent off? Do I take a couple of quid off? Whereas if you've got five separate orders. Well, you can let one run, you can close one off, you can take a partial off one, and you, you, there's lots, it gives you lots of opportunity to manage your trade. Whereas if you're 100%, it's a lot harder. Mm. It's funny how uh, there's so many different perspectives on this. And I find that there's sometimes 
it depends on which kind of assets you're trading. So if you're trading the large caps uh, indexes, because there's a lot more chop and multiple, you know, fake outs, breakouts, Indeed. and so on and so forth. With the small caps, it's a little bit different. Um, so I think, Colby, would you relate to that more? Or I, I was going to say that I I watch the Dixie sometimes, and I have zero exposure to Forex, so I started learning like three days ago what all everything was. But um, when I watch the Dixie, it seems like it kind of jumps to an area, creates a range, and then jumps and then creates a range. And it's and I feel like uh, when I'm listening to him talk about his strategy and how you're building into it, it makes perfect sense because it's not like a stock where it's going to just drop down, grab liquidity, shoot higher. You know, it's more based on fundamental, like real world things. And I was going to say, since, you know, ever since 2020, all the interest rate, Fed talk, you know, spending, every all these macro data um, information has been dropped. And the market basically just sits, waits for that information and then shoots in some random direction once it's <laughs> given it, out. It, it, it does. No, no, there's different aspects to the way you look at the market as well. Now, when you're day trading, like what I do is my principal wage, I'm actually market neutral. I, I can go either way, regardless of what the main trend is, because the moves in, say, pound JPY, uh, DAX, which is my favorite market, it can move 150 pips either way in the same day. Mm -hmm. So your bias isn't quite as important, but your conviction is. Mm -hmm. So you can have a conviction to the short side. And the dangerous thing is to start looking at all of the fundamentals. And then think, oh, yeah, maybe I'm going to change my mind today. But it could be a daily pullback. And yes, the fundamentals are telling this thing it's going high, but you had a conviction that it was short today. The chances are it could stay short all day. So sometimes you can get a little bit sidetracked in that. Um, certainly when you day trade, because the idea is to get in and get out within a few hours. Now, the pullbacks inside it are big enough for you to do it. Now, in stocks, I'm, I'm, I'm not a big stock trader. I'm not very good at it. Um, the, the market does move slightly different. But when it comes to news announcements, again, you never try and second guess the news. You might have an idea what the figures are. And I've seen it so many times. Um, if you watch me trade non-farm payroll, I'll often go completely the opposite direction of the market because there's always a reaction but i don't second guess it i wait for the news i wait for the reaction of the market it'll scream away it'll create an imbalance and that's where your fib comes into play and once you can see that top out the three fears of fib the drive the consolidation the retrace you can then use it as a trigger and then you've got to be a bit conservative. If you're going with the main trend, fine. Take it down to 76, beyond into 127, wherever you want to go. If you're going against the main trend and you're just getting that quick reaction of profit taking and people caught on the wrong side of the market, well, you get in at 23, you're risk-free at 38, you are gone by 50. And you load up and get in and get out. And, and that's the thing, because another part of day trading, what, what I see regularly, because I, I moderate a group, is they swing for the fences too much. And there's nothing wrong with a good size trade, but they're looking for three, four times more than what the market's willing to give. And then they wonder why they lose, because there's nothing worse than watching a wonderful P&L. And then it just comes all the way back down again. Then you go, oh. If only I'd pulled that 15 minutes ago. Yeah, I, like, I have a lot of that with my swing trading. Yeah, it, 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 it's horrendous. Um, I, I have a kind of a rule with my swings. Once I've got it to one-to-one, because -one, uh, by nature of a swing trade, it, it stops at a reasonably wide. But once it one-to-one, -one, I have it at risk-free. And I ne from that point, I never give away more than half of my profit. I watch it. So every sort of four hour candle close, 
I'll put a measuring tool on and I know where the, the half point is. I never give more than 50% of the profit away. And if it stops me out, well, it stops me out. It's just part and parcel. Start with zero, end with one, and you'll be fine. Do you find sense, that, boys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you find that you approach every trade identically with uh, position sizing and... I do now. Uh, so it's, yeah. you're pretty much acting like a robot. It's you know? more, we, we are human beings. Um, like I say, if you watch my videos, I think I'm the furthest thing away from a human being. I mean, <laughs> my, my wife calls me a gorilla. You know, I'm a big bear. Um, <laughs> but when it comes to the job, I try to be as methodical and analytical as I can. Now, when I was building up the account, I had to sort of go three steps forward, compound the position up a little bit, because that's another thing. If you're building an account, you can, I've seen it where they say, oh, you, you increase your pot size by X percentage. Well, that's quite difficult as you get higher up the tray. But what isn't difficult is your position size. If you increase that every three wins by 5%, it's not very painful and you naturally increase and these little few cents that you have that's added to the position size start adding up and then you start ending up having a good size position but because you've done it gradual your mindset's in control of it but if you sort of go right i've done a thousand dollars now i'm going to increase so i can have a 10 percent gain on my account that's a hell of a shudder to your mindset but if you did it gradual it's fine and it's how i built prop funds um i i um i have my own funds which pay me very well um i was introduced to to prop trading and they do it that way where you stage up but i built it the exact same way i, I worked on the position size not the pot size the pot size looks after itself and it's just the same rinse and repeat every day and if I don't see the condition that I'm after, I just won't trade it. So that's simple. So you're, you're sizing pretty much always the same, even if it's maybe multiple alignments. Because I was watching one of your videos recently, and you, you had, let's say, um, a big uh, a demand zone, and then the Bollinger Bands coming in as well. So that you have maybe multiple time or multiple indicators and then maybe multiple time frame alignments too. Is that maybe an A plus setup where you would then use two, three, four, five X size? Um, I, I don't necessarily size up, but what sometimes what I have is a maximum size. I can go pretty safe on my account up to about 30 quid a point. Mm. Right? Up up to. Once I go beyond that, the numbers start racking up really quick. Certainly on the DAX if you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> However, if I see that it's absolutely superb, instead of putting five positions in with five pounds each, taking it up to 25, and I kind of have a wild card just in case, right? What I might do is I'll go 10, 10, 10. Yeah. So, but that's when I sort of think this is at an absolute extreme. And I don't think this is going to move too much against me. I'll just put a, a double in, like half a lot, if you like, um, or, or a lot rather. Because um, I, I predominantly spread bet, which is price per point rather than lots. Uh, so you might hear me say 10 quid, which is equivalent to one lot. Um, I might put one lot in and see if it runs. And if it does, Sometimes I don't even have to let it go to full target because, as I said earlier on, I deal in physical money. Now, I look for a certain amount of money each day as a benchmark. I don't go, what will I get today? I, I want about 200 quid a day. That pays me quite well because I've got no debt. Uh, and three days a week, 48 weeks a year, that's about 30 grand of bookshe money. Um, and that's how I work it. Now, anything I do above that, result. So again, it comes back to target appropriately, size appropriately. If your greed takes over and you start chasing these markets because you think you're going to have a Lamborghini next week, you're an idiot. You mm -hmm. genuinely are an idiot and you need to give this up. 
Damn if it. you treat it as a job, COVID. <laughs> it will pay you as a job. Are you more focused on your risk reward or your win ratio? Well, risk reward to me is an absolute, it's a fallacy. Uh, and I'll, I'll kind of explain that. If you're going into the market and you're always going, well, it's got to be one unit to get three and all of this, you've already set yourself up to fail because the market has more chance of taking you out than it has of paying you. And then what you do is you go down the numbers game of, oh, well, I've only got to win 40% of the time and then I'll make money. All right. If you swing trade and I'll go with that because of the nature of what it is. If you're day trading and you're less than 50%, you ain't trading, you're gambling. All right. So my risk reward starts at one to one. All right. So it's one to one. But because I build backwards into it, it naturally makes it higher and it runs at about one to 2.5. Okay. Or, or thing. So risk reward, I find, is very dangerous. Um, I work on what's called ROI, return on investment. So I look for the money that I put on the table to make me X amount of money. But if I focus on one to two, three to one, all of this, you get on the wrong side of the trade because you'll force the trade. So to me, I work common sense. I'll, I'll give you an idea as to, to why that is. I used to own a mail order company. I was a managing director of it for 17 years. And my road into trading came from that factory. I didn't see a video. It wasn't just a good idea one day. I was in a business meeting and I was trying to pull the price down on the container of goods I was buying. And the guy wouldn't have it. He's going, no, no, I can't do it. Well, why? Why? Well, I'll buy more. I'm your biggest customer. Come on, give, give me a discount. He said, I can't. Um, the exchange rate is against me. And I was like, well, what's that got to do with a slice of bread? I want to buy a container of goods. But I had a chap who worked for me. He was an ex-commercial bank manager. Worked in my office. And he was in the same meeting. And he turned around to Pete and he goes, do you forward purchase? And he goes, yeah, we do. And I had this bizarre conversation about timing and exchange rate. And what they do is if you can buy physical dollars at a good price against the pound, by the time you buy something in the Far East, those dollars can put about 10% extra product inside the container. And I had a chat with sort of Pete at the time. It was the worst thing he could have told me, actually, because when he said it was going against him, I immediately thought, well, what happens when it goes for you? Do you make more money? <laughs> he's like, yeah, we do. I was, oh, okay, let's do a deal then. If it's going for you, I want quarter percent back, and I'll guarantee that I'll increase my product purchase by 20%, and if I don't, I'll give you the money back. <laughs> so we did a deal like that. And the trader was the born. Grew, <laughs> the trader was born. <laughs> <laughs> but as the company grew, we had to go from being a distributor to source, which is manufacturing. We had to do this process ourselves. So risk reward was never on the table for us. It was always, we're going to spend X amount of money. And how much is that money going to make us? That's the way my brain works. Now, when it comes to win rate, I look at it this way. I've got quite an expensive car on the drive. You know, I, I drive a Range Rover because you, you shouldn't have a Lamborghini, boys. Don't ever buy a Lamborghini. <laughs> right? I'll, I'll fly over there and I'll slap you silly. Right? <laughs> buy a Range Rover. Beautiful car. The only downside with them is they're bloody expensive to fix. My brother's right? got one. It, there's always an expensive fix. <laughs> Even a service costs a thousand pounds. Every time that thing goes to the garage, like bloody hell. Yeah. But I in love, America, there's but always I so love many... it. I Sorry, love the thing. But yeah. I'll, I'll give you a good analogy uh, and I'll use my car. If I take my car to a ropey garage and he could only fix that four times out of 10, how much damage has he done to that car? Four times Quite a out. bit. Right. But then also, would you trust that garage to know what he's doing? Because I'm sure I wouldn't. I wanted to go to a garage that can fix it eight times out of 10, 
pretty much knows what they're doing. And if they've got it wrong, it's just by a misdiagnosis, not because they don't know what they're doing. And I look at traders the same way. 55% is your cutoff point. If you're below 55%, you need to start concentrating on reading conditions in the market, understanding how the waves of the market work and understand your craft. If you're above 55, you're on that road. And that's the way I look at it. And if you're below the 55, you're erring more on the side of gambling and playing the numbers game than actually understanding the charts. And that's how I think. Now, I could be wrong. Most people do think I'm wrong. But I go to market, I trade in the moment, and I've made a living out of this for a long time. All I know is I got, I got some work to do on my end. <laughs> what's, what's your win ratio right now, Colby? <clears throat> We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> well, on my last statement, it was 92%. 92% win ratio. That's insane. I thought I was killing it with 60, like 67 is my average. If you look through the prop statements that I put up, it averages between 85 and 92%. But there's another element to this as well. I'm very patient. I'll only look to, it sounds stupendous, but it's not as great as you think it is because I'll only trade once or twice a day. So my hit rate is pretty much on point. And if I'm wrong, I quit. I, I don't sort of revenge trade. I've done all of this where I just keep on hammering at the market. And then suddenly you're like, oh, shit, I am down to a ridiculously low level. <laughs> but if I'm wrong, I stop and I'll reset and I'll do it again tomorrow. And then even if I'm right, I'll win. I'll win again. I will stop because I have a mantra, score, score, stop. Because the third time's the time where it's not a lucky charm. That's where the lucky charm punches you in the head. Hmm. So, and, and it's all, it all comes down to mindset. It genuinely is. Be very patient. Understand what you're looking at and have total conviction. But then also have a get out of jail free card. And that's why I scale backwards. That's my get out of jail free. Because even if I'm wrong, if you watch the DAX for argument's sake, it retraces within a retrace strong enough to get you out of trouble. So you can just sort of get out a small loss, break even or small profit. And it's all down to management. You can get in on the flick of a coin, manage your trade and you'll be fine. Yeah, I think that makes a lot more sense with the, the DAX and indexes. I could really understand or see how it works yeah. for you. Yeah, for, for, for stocks, don't get me wrong, I've done it with stocks. I, I've recently done a thing called Trade the Pool, um, which is a sister company to the five percenters. And I was atrocious at it, absolutely shocking, because I just don't understand the stock market in that sense, the share market. So your Teslas of this world, your Microsoft, your Apples, they, they just move, they gap around too much, whereas I'm used to a 24-hour market that's basically shut for an hour a day, hardly gaps at all, apart from on a Sunday night. You can see it, you can understand it, you know it's going to retrace back into it. You can get in, you can get out, you can walk away. When it comes to stock trading, different kettle of fish altogether. Yeah, it's crazy. It seems like um, the, one of the most important things is specialize in something, at least at first. You know, you maybe could add a second, third strategy on year 10 or 15 but um, it's like, for example, uh, Toby uh, does, he has the most crazy recoveries I have ever seen in my entire life, like 200 trades in one day. Two, from, bloody, yeah. to, I'll, I'll, to I'll, I'll still get your hair soon. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it just shows you there's so many ways to skin the cat. But I understand where both of you guys come from. Um, there, there, there is. There's no yeah. right or wrong in trading. Yeah. You know, I... I I kind of loathe um, forums and what have you to a degree, simply because everybody argues about this is the best, that's the best. Oh, yeah. you're mad. You know, you need to be scalping this. You need to be swing trading that. <laughs> Who cares? There's only one measure in trading, just one. And it start with zero, end with one. Have more at the end of the day than you started with. And that's it. That's your measuring stick. Now, if you're looking at a week, 
Well, as long as on Monday I start and on Friday I've got more than I started with, I've done well. Does it really matter what happens in the middle? You could do it with one trade or, or as you said, Toby there, 200 in a day. Bloody hell. Your fingers yeah. <laughs> burning. But if you can do it and you understand it, where who's wrong? Who's wrong? You know, look at the old turtle traders. You know, everyone said they were mad because it, it didn't have a stop and it was based on sort of just following the flow. But they're all bloody rich at the end of it. Uh, turtle traders are, it's a great, um, great books to read about. I, I think it, it is. And you, you go right the way back in time. You, mm, know, well, um, you go to any stock market crash and they go, oh, oh, it's the end of the world. No, it might be for that moment. But there's a lot of people make a lot of money from it. I made a lot of money from the market crashing in 2019. Um, I lost a lot of money from the market crashing in 2015. Right? But I learned every single time. And one of the, the things that I did learn, sort of 2015, I, I know that did inside out, French election. I lost 18 grand like that. Blew up an account that I'd spent sort of months building. And I thought I was king of the tree because I was only just starting out sort of day trading, if you like, around that time. And it taught me one lesson. You can't outwit the market indefinitely. You know, so you need your pain threshold and you need a rule that can stage that out. So you stage backwards, don't go 100%. And never, ever leave a vicious market without stopping it. Because I did, and it wiped me out. So you, you learn these lessons all the time. But who's right? You know, you go on a forum, it'll be the loudmouth. But do they actually make any money? The one who makes money is the one in the back corner who's very quiet. Yeah. Doesn't need to scream. With forums and communities, you really have to understand who's trading what strategy, who you can trust, and and then really limit any sort of uh, feedback that you acknowledge. I could, say, I guess you can say. My mine was you step away from them altogether. I was like, look at that. Yeah. yeah. The mental. Um, I, yeah. I stick to the the prop firm that I that I sort of work with. I stick to theirs because we're all on the same hymn sheet. That yeah, that um, helps. Uh, and that worked well you go into some of them and they're just oh it's just crazy stuff crazy um and all they're interested in is the big fast win and if you treat a business like that you'll burn the business you'll burn it very quickly it's very easy to load up and put too big a position size up but that's all they talk about oh i'm on two lots and i, and I made 500 quid in an hour great how have you done today? Oh, I've lost three grand. Oh, you're doing well then, aren't you? <laughs> it's boom and bust. Slow and steady. Slow and steady is the way. I, I got a question. I don't know if you can, uh, if you have anything, but if you could share your screen and show a trade and maybe walk through it for anyone watching this, because I've seen a few of your videos and I kind of have an idea of the DAX and how you're trading these indexes. I'll, I'll give you a rough idea of... How I can I even throw things. something up if you want. Let me. Um... Sorry, I, I don't think we asked you to prepare anything, but I'm just. Yeah, curious. I'll just I'll, I'll just throw I'll, I'll I'll build you a chart and I'll show you what I look for. Uh, and Colby, if you, I don't know if you have any questions. Share a screen. Share? Oh, there we go. And, uh, let me yeah, we still look. got easy 20, 20 minutes or so. Yep. Let's have a look. Which screen can you see? Has it got a Bollinger Band on it or is it? Yep. It has. Right. Because I've got three screens here. I've got to decide which one I'm looking at. <laughs> oh, okay. Let, let me just um, pull this crap out of the way. Uh, I'll put it onto my bottom screen. Okay. You see that? Yeah. All right. So if we look at something um, like this, all right, it's cable, trade cable pretty much every single day, all right? We'll just take the indicators off for just a second, okay? And all you're left with is just the drawings. Now I'm gonna take the blue ones off 
These are price zones. The, these are fibs. I'll gotcha. I'll give you a good idea of roughly what I'm looking at. Okay. Let me just widen this up. Okay. All right. So if I start out here, that looks as scary as hell, correct? <laughs> You'll go, look, how, how many levels have you got to play with? All right. But if I showed you this on an entry chart, that's quite clean. That's nice and easy to understand. All right. Now let me just take this back and I'll show you. Essentially, what I'm trying to do is build up a map. Each one of these turning points is a key area that I want to look at. All right. So you'll see red solids. You'll see yellow solids and you'll see black solids. Each one of these reds, that solid, is a key turning point. Okay. I'll drop that into a weekly and I'll do this watered. And you'll see the yellows are in, but I'm also compressing as they go. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'll move them into place, looking to see touches. Take it into a daily. So we can show that across. And I do the same with the blacks. All right. Once I've got those levels in place, they stay there. I'm quite happy with it. Okay. I'll put my candlesticks back on. And this is all about just building a chart to start with. All right. Get the candlesticks back on. Take them off. Tight. There we go. Come out to your monthly. These dotted lines are all fibs. Now, again, I'm looking for three areas of the chart. I'll find a daily fib in here. I'll find a weekly fib in there. And then I'll look for a daddy, which is this one. Why? Because hmm. that is encompassing the price and it's only just broken. Now, earlier on, I said a fib will show you where the price is going to go. Right. If I put an extension on that, watch this. Extension. Highest point to lowest point. Pull that back. There's your 127 that I was talking about earlier on. Hmm. This will map out to the pit where that went. To the pit. So that's why these levels are important. They absolutely map the chart. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. It came down to the pip. So there's a chart that ended in 2016. Solid directional move, encompassing the price. When it breaks, it look for the ratio and it bang on. Right? That happens so many times. Okay. So once I've got these into place, I can start working through a direction. Now, the direction is very very simple it's it's not difficult to understand you can start reading the chart we can see the rejection here that's pushing up it hasn't come to a moving average that is pulling up this i speed it up because i look for momentum i'm a momentum trader rather than anything else so all i'm doing is i'm trying to get a gauge of what this chart's doing now to me that's a small pullback but it's genuinely on the other side. I'll look into the weekly, see what's going on here. Well, still moving up, still moving up, pull back, other side, pushing. So it's genuinely to the upper side. All right. Look for a weekly, a daily run. I look for the same principle. This one's slightly different. You can see it's moving down. So it's within a pullback. Market has come up. It's found the midpoint of here. You can do MACDs, whatever you want. But there it is. It's come round and the pressure's pushed it back down. So the bigger trend is to the up. But at the moment, it's wavering. And you can see it here. So from here, looking to break it down into a four hour. What's my four hour doing? I'm primarily looking at the price. Well, it's moving down, 
it's moving down. So if it's gonna move down, where are the stall points? These levels. And each time you come down the frames, you start seeing they're being respected constantly. And if I'm looking to move down, I'm gonna come from here into here, move it into the hour, from the hour, pull this across, right. All day today, this has been predominantly down. You can see, thump, thump. And what I was saying before about being market neutral, and you don't have to be sort of stuck with your bias. Well, eight o'clock this morning, that went down and went right down here. Nine o'clock through, say, 11 o'clock, that went right up. If you're looking for 10, 20 pips, you're going to find it in both of them. And if you're subjected to just being short, you're waiting for breaks and you're following it down. So once you've got a conviction and you understand what you're looking for, you can start taking it down into here. Right? Well, earlier on this afternoon, whenever it is, if you want to short, there's your level. You work it down. Look for your midpoints. I'll show you a midpoint. We, we nickname this golden eye. And I'm doing this really quickly, guys. You have a zone, which is a fib. And you mark this out, which is your 61 through your 38. Hmm. Just like so. Reaction point. Break the level. You want to be out or risk free when it hits this thing. As soon as it does, and you've got three areas in here, 38, 50, 61. And all you're doing is you're working from one to the next to the next. These become reaction points as well. If the price is coming into this, high probability it'll bounce. Like here, like here. Move it all the way down. There to there, from there to there. Simple. If I start putting zones into these things, those golden eye zones, how many times does it go into the middle? Every time. And that's what keeps your win rate up. And you enter just using a five minute. You've got your break, you can have a double break, 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 in. Simple. If it's going the other way, break, break, in. Get in, get out. Keep an eye on this for your momentum. Ideally, you want to be going from extreme to extreme. And it literally is that simple. And then if you're wrong, you're looking for two barriers. So you enter here, where are you going to get out? Well, there's a swing point. There's another barrier. I want two. So if this, you've got a Bollinger, moving average, a swing, and that. Multiple barriers for that market to push through. And then he stops up here. And all you would do is just show you quickly how I would my extension, just say for argument's sake, I'll switch these indicators off just a second, just so I can highlight something for you. Just for argument's sake, you're entering this candle. Sure. Just short, just for argument's sake, or even this one down here, whatever, where it goes against you. I just want to show you how I measure it out. Order one, two, three, four, five, one, two, seven, out. That's your stop. Stop above there. Got your five orders naturally spaced out. And in this instance, well, it would have just run straight for you. But if it didn't, for argument's sake, I don't know, we'll find somewhere where it went a bit tits up. You ended on there, this one, here, but you were going long to get to the midpoint it went for you a little bit and then ran away. Well, if we do the same principle, we entering here, we're going to get out on the other side of that zone. Show you for why that is as well in just a second. Okay. Because swing, barrier, swing, barrier, out. So first order triggers the second order doesn't quite hit the third one then rattles off 
looking for your midpoint zones, just like that, it would have hit it. And because that's so deep into here, it would give you that extra profit. And where where are you trying to get out exactly here on this one? Well, mm -hmm. I, I just to give you an idea of where I start working, I have these zones in the middle of the levels. All right. Soon as it enters into the zone, I'm looking to pull my stop to break even. So if you enter on here, soon as that price closes inside it, pull your stop in. So it's break even. Uh, yeah, okay. So you're, take you're, off you're, some nice. take off some money if you want to. You know, you might want to take sort of a partial profit. When it moves down into the center point, you can either leave the stop where it is or take some more profit off. When it breaks through here, start ratcheting the stop and then let it run as far as you can because chances are as it's well as we can see it's come down it would have hit the target one two three didn't run very far but then it's come back and that's all i'm doing that that's a very watered way of what i do i'm working from said zone to that zone through free air but i've made a conviction before i got there so Very different style yeah go be good or, um yeah. so you're basically like using a big picture to find key higher lows it, it's um, high time frame it, it, it's a high time frame concept of direction and a low time frame entry and because i'm not willing to outstay my welcome um there's a lot more to this because i do map out on an atr um what the big arena is the maximum sort of movement that the chart will give i can put pivots on i can i do use a a bollinger band and i'll show you roughly why i use a bollinger band let me just take this drawing off just a second I'll back on if i push this back out to the hourly and i get rid of that this thing you can kind of see that it's running down if I'm wanting to go short, I want to make certain it's either inside here, running to the bottom. In other words, it's bounced off a moving average or it's coming from the other extreme through. Or this thing is flaring out, showing volume coming into the market. All right. If I start seeing collapsing in here, I'm going to be really careful. You know, but these are what are important these levels because they're my start and stop now the next part of it is i can put entry exits onto this as well now if i just get rid of these indicators again because i don't use them a lot i look for imbalances in the market right whereas being a power shift like this an overextended candle well, if i get my fib I can see that as clear as day. I can see the top. I can see the bottom. I can see the retracement coming in. All of these stall points marry up. Every one of them. Okay. Just draw. This is what the blues are. All these are are entry exits. So if I move that down, map the whole thing out like this. Take it down right the way through. So you're using the fib retracements I to get fibs. levels, and then I do. the I do. and then the fib what they are is for... the higher time frames. These hold quite a bit of weight in the market. You see, as you run through the chart, stalls, 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 stall all the time, right down on these black ones. When I'm on an hourly chart, put them in, drop it into a five minute. These can now have pending orders sitting on them if I want to. And it's literally up, pending order, trigger, out. In, out. And it's just a it's just a map. It's just a road map to the chart. That's all it is. 
and then there's other ways of doing it where um so if i'm swing trading just to to give you an idea of uh, a swing trade and i get rid of this because i was looking at this today with with the guys um my swing trades are a lot different because i use a two trigger system for the swings I'm looking for the momentum shown in the RSI. So you have a cross here, slowed down to 28. So it needs a lot of momentum to push through the 50. Within three candles, it needs to break what I call the river. Now the river is a compressed Bollinger Band set up with a 50 and a Fibonacci of 0 0.382. Okay, creates that river. Well. Soon as that breaks, that's it. And then again, you manage the trade to completion. So yeah. once it gets there, you stop. Is this gray box on the other side of the river? Because you don't want it to allow it to go down to there. You can average backwards into it. That's what these blue lines are. So order one, two, three, four, five. As long as it doesn't break the moving average, because it can bounce back up. And then every time it comes to a level, and these are weekly and monthly levels, just like what I showed you for the day trade, you take off so much of the trade each time till eventually you're left with maybe 10%. So you can see 10% off here, 10% off there, so forth. Carve it off, okay? If it comes into the river and then comes back out, you can add into it, do the same process again. And then eventually it's going to cross the river and take you out. Simple, systematic way of swing training. That will make sense? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, so you're using the FIB retracements for the from the weekly and daily levels, and then you're using the FIB extension to see where to add into your trades once you get in? Um, yes and no. Um, I use a retrace, uh, an extension more to see where the extreme of the market is. So if it's going to break uh, a major swing on its next leg to push up, it'll come roughly to about the 127 to the 161. So it can help me target appropriately. Now the retracement in this sort of scenario, if I just come back to the hourly, you can see an absolute strong drive. You can't deny it, okay? You would also recognize that that high isn't getting sort of breached because you'll see the three parts of the, of the, the fit, the drive, the consolidation, and the collapse, okay? Well, very simple. If I can see that and I can recognize this, it repeats over and over. Get in on your 23, Risk free at your 38. Be make certain that you are either out because you're coming to the 50, it's on. If you want to go with the big trend, right, fine, run it to 60. After that, run it to 76 and so forth. But it's systematic. In, risk free, out. Simple. And the whole part of this comes down to one thing, guys. One thing patience hmm. then you can you... take to all strategies for sure the patience yeah and it, Colby, it's what that you... easy and or... then from there you're just starting to wait okay there's my 15 minutes it's from the same motion or you can come down into your five minute which is where i prefer right i'm here right or, or up here where, where where's our starting grid you know where are we at here we are there we are, right? There's a break here. Average in up to the other level up there, out of the way. Maybe it's trigger it a couple of times, but it's give you an in. These give you an out. And you're just going bang, bang, bang. Because you never want to outstay your welcome. A trade can last three minutes. It can last three hours. But you're going to be out. Or if you're talking to Toby, he's the last seconds if he's doing 200 a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But does that make sense to you, lot? Because to me, it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. um, that's how we used to forward purchase. Um, it was all on daily charts. We were just looking to buy on good levels. That was it, you know. And from there, you get in, you get out. And if you've got enough banked, quit. It's that simple. It has a bit of a market maker vibe where you're kind of just trading that range a bit. Um, indeed, indeed. Yeah, um, you, if you can understand the waves, like case, case in point, here, all right, it can run maybe 10 pips for you, but you get a vibe, as you've just said, right, okay, this might pull back on itself. How would I know? Well, it goes boom, 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 thump. Well, inside that thump, I can see an imbalance, which is this candle here. All right, from there to there, to give you an idea. If I see an imbalance come in there, I'll take money out, all right? And the imbalance I look for is basically, it's a three candle pattern. Start, center, end. If that wick's not touching that wick, that's an imbalance inside the middle, it'll come back to try and refill it. It often does, okay? And all it is, it's just people caught on the wrong side and profit taking, that sort of thing. Well, if I see that, okay, I'll take some money off the table. I'll let it come back into the range as it's done right here. And if you watch the videos, you see me do it time and time again, carving off, comes back. I'll put the order back in up here and then let it run down. See it again, same thing. And then eventually you just look at your bank and you're, Shit, I've done 300 quid a day or 500 quid. Right, I quit. But the idea is a single idea. You know, because I'm going to move from here to here. That's it. I'm interested to hear um, Toby's thoughts if he can take, if there's something here that is there a correlation between his trading. I, it's so different. I know this because I know both of you guys is trading a little bit. Toby's more than yours, but just any thoughts or? No, I, I, I like a lot of the ideas and stuff. Um, it's just a little bit more challenging when you're you're trading low float stocks. Um, well, that, that's the point. Um, if you're on sort of like a Forex market like this, there's a lot of money flow and there's a lot of direction and pullbacks. Um, the, the DAX for argument's sake, this one here. If you're looking at this, even on a five-minute chart, these ranges are huge. You know, there, there's, there's a move there. And I take, so there's the start of the move, that red candle. And we get down into, well, there, there's its lower point, right? Five-minute chart, how many hours? So two hours, two and a half hours, all right? In two and a half hours, that's a hundred pips. Two and a half hours. Stocks don't do that. Not really. But you can get in and out of this for 20 pips easily. Get in, get out. It's that simple. It's the speed of movement. Uh, well, diff you, different markets do you think there's something you could take as you you trade um the spy uh i don't know if you know this gary but uh colby is like purely spy trader at this point okay. options uh also futures or what do you what do you think colby um yeah it sounds like really similar to what i do if i could share my screen just really fast yeah 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 um knock yourself out I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot more to it than that, boys. But I want to oh, give yeah. you... I, I do have a paid community. So um, I can't give everything away. Um, but the takeaway is the levels. If you get your levels right and your fibs in place, the rest of it's a walk in the park. Yeah, I do somewhat of a similar thing where I'll draw, you know, basically this is the daily chart of the S&P 500. I'll have a big downtrend. This is what I call a macro downtrend. And then yeah. I'll zoom a little bit closer and I'll go into like the one hour and I'll say, well, 
when we were up here, this was a micro uptrend. And then we're right here. This is a micro downtrend. And then whenever I find those areas, I basically find key. When you're in an uptrend, you're making higher highs, higher lows. So these are your higher okay. lows. And I'm drawing them out as like a key level of support. And then I'm and drawing. How, how long are you looking to hold a trade for? That changes all the time. I've only been trading for two years. I've been through the hold for one minute thing. I've tried that for a long time. But as I trade more, I realize that the thing that I like is a 30, about 30 minutes. I'd say that's minutes. probably my my sweet spot. And then I'll draw these little demand zones basically from where the higher low was back into where the channel is because that's where all the key buyers were in this little area. And I'll do the same for the, the backside and I'll try to play off of these levels. But no, no. yeah, cool. it sounds pretty similar. I just don't use any fibs or any anything no, like uh, that. Uh, uh, fibs I like because it's a repeatable process. And if it's locked in stone, those ratios marry up all the time. You know, and it, it's the one tool that can give you a definitive entry, a definitive risk free, and a definitive exit. You know, because if you're just using levels, that's the same thing. But it's whether you've got those levels in place. Mm -hmm. Whereas think think of it this way. Um Fibonacci in nature is repeatable. And if you look at the cosmos and you think about the stars. The random, or at least you think the random, but they're not. The Milky Way is a perfect 618 Fibonacci retracement. Uh, it's the golden ratio. You superimpose that on a seashell, that's 618 as well. Yep. But one is infinitely bigger than the other. So the ratios work in a random situation. What's a chart? It's random numbers. So that's why it works, and it's why they, they gravitate to them all the time. But it's also a tool that has a lot of eyes on it. And if it's got yeah. a lot of eyes on it, it gets a lot of interest. That's and then what you've got to do is power is not knowing what somebody else doesn't. It's knowing what somebody else does. That's, that's the power of trading. Because I, I akin it to a game of chess. If I know what the big boys are looking at, then I can either play with them or I can stay away from them mm -hmm. because that's when you start seeing the fair counts mm -hmm. because they will induce people to come into trades. Stop trading slightly different. That can be manipulated really heavily. Forex slightly different because of the size of the market, but you can see the breadcrumbs that they're leaving and those breadcrumbs will feed you. And that's, that's kind of my principle. That's the way I look at it, you know. Never be greedy, get in, get out. And when you're done, quit. Thanks for sharing that, Gary. Is Does anyone else have any questions or, or Gary, is there anything you'd, else you'd like to share? Um, um, before we... Open book. Um, it, it, it's, trading is one of the most decisive industry, industries there is. And there is no right or wrong answer. If you're making money, you're doing it right. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. You know, Amen to that. Measure. Yeah. That's your measuring <laughs> stick. But it's about keeping it realistic as well. If you've got a thousand pound account, you ain't going to be a millionaire. It's going to take time to build that up. You know, but the expectation of the industry is too great. It's sold in such a way that they think it's easy. It's not. You know, technically it is. You know, I mean, mine, like I said, mine's as easy as that. Get my levels in place. I know where I'm getting in. I know where I'm getting out. All I've got to do is get the direction correct for the moment that I'm going to trade, which is an hour segment. That's as easy as it gets. But up here, you think it's complicated. So you look for the Holy Grail. And because you look for the Holy Grail, you'll never find it because it doesn't exist. And then you get angry. And because you're angry, you revenge trade and do all this. And then suddenly you don't have a thousand pounds anymore. You've got nothing. But if you set out to make five quid, five dollars per day off your thousand pounds, well, you could do that. It's 50 cents, 10 pips, easy. Well, that's 25 quid a week, 100 a month. You're going to screw up for a month. So you need a month's worth of recovery and you're going to want a month off because you're going to want to go on holiday. Well, work that out. 25 a week, four week month, 
100 quid, 100 quid over 10 months, 1,000. Next year, you're not starting with 1,000 anymore, you're starting with two. Then you compound that up. Principle, build it up slowly, just like a business. But most people can't take that. And I think that's where the rise of the prop firm came from, because the, the prop industry, if I, if I was to analogize this, um, I think it's sold slightly wrong because it's sold on, we'll give you a hundred thousand pound account. Well, you're not getting a hundred thousand pound account. You're getting a hundred thousand pound of leverage, buying power. The drawdown is your account. But a lot of people fail the challenges because they position size on the hundred thousand and not the drawdown. And then they blow it. And Sadly, that's the way it is. Um, but the company that I aligned with myself, they don't want that. They want proper, good, honest traders. And if you build it up, that can turn your thousand pounds into good money and it'll do it very quickly. So, how come you went with a prop firm as opposed to because you've been in the business now for so long? Um, you, I never you, wanted you know. to. I never wanted to. Um, I, I moderate a small group of guys. And I'll give a little salute to Volker, horrible little creature that you are. No, I just <laughs> love him. I love him to bits. Um, he came to me and he said, look, I want to try this company, 5%. And I said exactly what you've just said. Why? So build up your own account. Why would you pay somebody to trade? And he says, no, I really want to try this. Now, I'm one of these. I won't say anything unless I've either done it or I'm prepared to do it. You know, so when you see my mad life, I, I, I've done it. Okay. And I said, all right, then. Well, what I'll do, Volker, is this. I'll trade it with you. So I bought a challenge and I traded it with him and I showed him how to pass it. But then I started thinking, hold on a second. Eh? Let's think about my business days. What's the one thing I said to you guys about risk reward? I don't give a monkeys about it. But what do I give a monkeys on? Return on investment. So you buy into a challenge for $235 or whatever the cost of the art. You pass it, you get that money back. So now cost you nothing, but they double the size of your account. So your equity is naturally doubled and it's somebody else's. So my return on investment is massive rather than building up my own funds. And because of the way the five percenters work, every time you do a milestone, they double the account and you can go from sort of a 40k challenge up into like what I've done, multiple hundreds of thousands. And you've got a decent size drawdown inside that, which gives you a good size account. And all I'm doing is whatever I'm doing on my wage account, I replicate on that account. And it's a bonus. Mm, I see. Okay. And that's how I did it. I got into it purely by accident so uh, because I wouldn't do it. I, I did it as a favor, but then I got to know the company quite well. And it's kind of, it also reinforced what I do for a living. Right. Because it's third party. You can't manipulate it. The figures you see are what you get. Um, I'll send you some of the statements if you want. Uh, sure. That's made me recognized in the industry now. And this year in London, there's going to be one of the biggest expos. It's Traders Day Live. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's a, it's an expo for the Forex industry. I'm the keynote speaker for that. So I'm going to be on the stage having a bit of a chat, talking to my peers. That's awesome. wonderful. Th thanks for that, guys. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's what it is. It, and it can be a fast track into bigger funds. But what I would say is and it's how i do manage mine i might look at it as a bonus but i use that to fund my own funds as well it, it, it's just a, a way of increasing your capital gotcha that's a fair enough answer it makes sense to me all right um, same there, there you go so are you happy boys yeah that was great can i, can I, can I help that was great you definitely need to get out more soon <laughs> first First, get a guest on the pod. It's a new pod. Uh, we're, we're, we're episode seven now. 
So okay. we always talk about our trading, uh, how it's going for the week, biggest lessons, biggest takeaways, plans going forward. And so, yeah, it's some, something new. So, we, yeah, we're excited to have a first guest and, you know, see what kind of lessons we can kind of cherry pick from everyone's strategy. Uh, yours has probably been the most different strategy we've encountered. But at the same time, there's a lot of universal lessons that I think just go across there, everyone's there, strategies. There so, is. I mean, the, the, that. your method of getting in and out of a market doesn't really matter. Right. I, I think the money's made in the management of your trade rather than how you get in that that's where the money's made um and that's my strength uh if i'm wrong i know how to get out but the other part of it is if i'm wrong i do get out but i'm very picky on how i go in in the first place yeah no um, absolutely that, that, that's it um very very simple very very simple all right gary uh or scruffy trader i'll <laughs> Make sure we'll probably have this episode up tomorrow. We'll try to get them out right, by cool. Friday, but I'll have have your information in the video description below for anyone to check you out, learn more so, about it. If, if there's anything you want us to share with the community, you can always send it to us afterwards. Uh, Colby or me, myself, just any information. We'll make sure to add it in the description. I'll, I'll send. Um, I mean, uh, farewell to everybody, sort of thing. Um, but I'll send you some of the statements so you can flash them in because i've done this before i mean i'm not i'm not the best public speaker in the world um but i'll tell you the way i see it you know Fair a enough. lot of people disagree with the way i do things and quite frankly i don't care because i get mm -hmm. paid every week exactly yeah and we're all just learning here so it's it's fine and um, but i'm an open book if you're stuck i'm very easy found just drop me a line and, I, and i'll happily talk to you but if it's about stocks I'm the worst person in the world to speak to. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to go into Forex and indices, I'll show you. There we go. Yeah, I got to know your strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Happy days, right. boys. Happy days. All, All right, guys. Awesome. All the best to you, kids. Thank you so much. Appreciate what it. I very well. Do just to feed me and what was left over, I put towards my dreaming. But the only thing in life that has meaning are the things you gotta work for. Believe me. Take